Hello members of the internet and welcome to a, well, I don't even know if it's a Linux review. Uh, welcome to a non-operating system review, where today I'm going beyond the expectation of everybody, or the vast majority of people, and I said to myself, how about using something that would be familiar to everybody. Well, I thought to myself, Apple doesn't use an operating system like iOS, they use Mac OS X, but Android. Have you ever thought, you know, playing math, saying, hmm, Android plus PC equals something? Well, that something is called... A phone that rings. Give me a minute. <coughs> As I was saying before this well-timed <laughs> ringer comes by, I said, what about, <coughs> you, uh, you know, do the math. Android plus PC equals, well, it equals Android x86. This is a development team that actually puts Android on PCs, which is cool, but <laughs> it actually uses an Android tablet or Android phone, I don't know what you want to do with it, it actually uses a full-fledged Android, and it is 870 somewhat megabytes, depending on what Android instru install you want, because it has to load all the drivers, like your wireless card, your Ethernet, and all the drivers for the GPUs, but... Let's see if it really is the operating system to use. Like, the operating system for any machines. Well, right off the bat, that's not good news. I just turned it on and check this out. One, two, three crashes already. Huh. I went to the liberty of pre-installing a couple uh, applications so we can do the test. And... Uh, yeah, so we got uh, two Angry Birds, a Bricks Breaker King, we also have CPU-Z, we have Google Docs that I've installed, and Microsoft Word. The other ones all come in bundled. So, let's begin with uh, the game, you know? So, let's try it out. Well, that was easy. But what can you expect? This uh, system actually has an upgraded GPU now. It is now running an ATI Radeon X850. And uh, the older card, which I thought was a Radeon 9550, turned out to be some sort of an NVIDIA card. I don't know the model name, but oh well. And it doesn't work. See, you have to have a recent GPU or semi-decent GPUs in order to run Android, but unfortunately, not everything works out of the bat. So, let's go ahead and try a, a lighter game, because let's see what Rio does. Uh, you can exit, but you can definitely see a bit of the lag. So let's try something a little easy. And, whoa. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot. PCs don't have accelerometers, so... <laughs> Yeah. Now how do I get out of that? Well, just launch Angry Birds. It'll go back and crash. That's that's stupid. But anyways, let's go ahead and go CPU Z. You know, see what kind of crap we got. Well, it recognizes we have a Pentium 4 machine because I am using the Dell Dimension 8300 for that for that aspect because the other one, uh, yeah, don't use Quadro parts. Nvidia Quadros, they'll just give you uh, graphics. Anyway, so as we go, the clock speeds are not available to not available, and they're both stopped, which is weird because CPU loads going. <laughs> um. The GPU vendor is an XORG R300 project. I think this is the uh, the uh, Radeon uh, chip series right there, but 
Like I said, it runs, uh, oh, there it is. You want 41? I don't know. Like I said, it does detect the card, but it doesn't mean that it works. It is kind of a modified Android, you know? So, but, and they're around like seven to 800, or maybe even up to a gig to write, um, which is normally way higher than what you would see, as most Android go anywhere between three to 500 megs on the phone. But, that's beyond the point. If you go to device, uh, it is requesting super user, okay. Well, it does detect that it's a Dimension 8300, which is surprisingly awesome. It does detect the, detect the resolution, the screen size. This has got to be a white tablet, 74.37 inches. <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, available RAM, out of the 1 gig, we have 59% with 597 megs. And the available storage is ridiculously high because it's a 40 gig hard drive. We have 94% left, which is cool. System, um, yeah, we have uh, Android 4.4.4 KitKat, which is actually is the recent, well, the stable build. I did try Android Lollipop 5.1, but it actually just stuck to the Android logo and it just, uh, I don't know, I just hung there. Uh, battery, as you'll notice here, we have the exclamation mark saying our battery's about to crap out, but yeah, health is unknown because it's a desktop computer. Maybe this battery thing will work on a laptop, I'm not sure. Thermal, no thermal data, sensors. We have an orientation sensor, shows nothing, and CPU-Z for Android. Well, who knew? Well, here's a cool aspect. Instead of clicking home, if you got a supported keyboard, like this one for example, if you press that home button, this happens. If you press music button, this happens, which is cool. But, let's be on the point. Uh, I'm not going to try the power button on it, just in case if it shuts it off. But, let's go ahead and go to settings. And actually, the scroll does work, you know, you just, uh, just go ahead and use two fingers and go up and down and it should work just fine. <clears throat> let's go to about tablet, and even... The Android version will see the model number and the manufacturer, which is great. And I know Dell did make tablets, so I don't know if that could help or not, but who knows. And this is the Android version. Here's an Easter egg for you. Keep on tapping or clicking, and this is what happens. You get to play with a K. Well, tap or click and hold, and this happens. Well, now you can click. Uh, once again, click or tap and hold. And now you have this. This actually is a cool Easter egg. You can actually click on stuff. Basically, it is all the versions of uh, Android that released, like Jelly Bean, Gingerbread, Cupcake, Honeycomb, Ice Cream Sandwich, and all the hoopla, Donut, Eclair. You know, that's all. That's all the good stuff. You know, uh, that's Kit Kat, I guess. And uh, yeah. It's pretty cool. I mean, you get to see everything. That's pretty awesome. Now, in order to get down, you either have to click or try to get the tab, uh, the, this thing up and this thing up. But because we have a home button on our keyboard, just whoop, and it's done. So that's a pretty cool Easter egg. And uh, <coughs> on Android uh, 5.0 and 6.0 Marshmallow. Uh, this has been replaced with a clone of Flappy Bird, which I call Flappy Android. But 6.0, you can add more than one, and you get yeah, Android Flappy Android Extra Bang, eh, eh, Extra Bang, Extravaganza. There we go, I got it. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's next? So, uh, let's try to see the launch Google Docs. I mean, you got to do some office stuff, right? Right on the go, and there you go. Docs crashed, and this crashed twice. That's the problem with this. It is extremely buggy, like crazy. However, launching Microsoft Word works just fine. And yes, this is actually true to what I say. 
it is a pain in the ass. And let me fix my typo, and there you go. Now let's try to watch a YouTube video together. And of course I'm going to use my channel for demonstration purposes. But this is what you get. I'm just going to go ahead and lower down the volume. And click here. You can go full screen. This happens a lot. This is what's the problem. But at least this actually does work. And the audio to video actually seems to work not too bad. I didn't notice too much lag, but at least it works. Hitting the escape button works just like it should. Alright. Well, that's good enough for that. So uh, let's go home. So YouTube works fine. If you go to browser, browser this is GApps, it constantly crashes, but the browser works just fine like the way it should. So that's a really, really, really good sign. And I've been using it with my uh, email account, so you get your email too. So there are some pros and cons on that. Um, the pros being, well, it's freaking Android, what can you expect? It's pretty awesome. Look, I can even go to the Play Store and literally install what would work on an Android like everything but unfortunately maybe my GPU is not rec it, it doesn't work too well with the uh, Android because it's an ATI maybe Nvidia would have more success but I'm not sure on that I mean I do have an AGP 7600 GT that I picked up <laughs> yeah that's my rant but anyways, yeah, you got your games, you got your everything, Google Play, Google freaking Play, and there you go, Angry Birds Pop, Bubble Pops, Tetris, eh, let's try this, this thing freaking works on everything, and G-Apps constantly crashes, it's annoying as shit, let's see if this thing can handle at least a puzzle game, Unblock King, I'm never putting something with King again. Alright, well, you can see here, it is installing and lagging as shit. Maybe a dual core or quad core uh, machine would work better, but that would. what's the point of that? Because you can still run Windows. But at least this actually could be a good replacement. But, looks like the freaking game won't start. Or does it? Oh, 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 wait a minute. This is actually the very first game that I have to twist my keyboard again. And it actually does seem to work. And it seems to be fluent. This is obnoxious. Tilting my head like this is freaking... Oh, look at that, it crashed. Oh, fuck. Well, thanks for giving me false hopes. Come on, crash so I can get the... Are you going to launch for real this time? No, that's what I thought. And as usual, clicking this will get you this. Now you got to hold down your mouse, your left click, and drag them all down. Which could be a pain in the butt. You sort of wish you can go ahead and touch your TV screen or monitor, but no. It doesn't work that way. So, you can also add more screens, but I'm just going to go ahead and remove these. So, if you're thinking about using this for gaming, well, forget it. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea for that. <laughs> Other than that, maybe you can get away with it on some aspects. But, of course, if you use the microphone, this happens. Yay! Of course, you can hear the pops in the back. The pops in the back are actually from my speakers. Yeah, my speakers. So stuff actually works. So now, and of course, it's rooted. So now, let's go and recap. So, what are the pros on that? Well, it's it's freaking Android on PC. This is ridiculously awesome. I mean, this could potentially be the operating system to 
to use on old machines, even... Well, I did try it on a Pentium 2, and all it does is it goes, it loads, it reboots. So oh, maybe not on old, old machines, but at least on Pentium 4s and stuff, maybe you can use it, you can get away with a few things. But, of course, it's work in progress. It's always going to be work in progress. It's not going to be always compatible, so... Hmm, it's picky on the hardware side. Um, what else? Well, it's free. Who can, who can resist... Who, can, who can't resist free? Also, I've noticed on DistroWatch it's picking up uh, in popularity, but from what I'm seeing, it's promising. It's promising. Now, let's go for the rest. The bad stuff. Which means everything else. The built-in app, well, the, the apps that comes with Android, well, f from that build anyways, works flawlessly. Anything you install on top of that, ew, it's a hit and miss. Games, forget about it. Apps, CPU-Z worked flawlessly. Word worked alright too. But Google Docs, Yep, it literally... Bleh. Uh, and then you saw all these crashes that kept going and going and going and going and going. I just booted the PC and there was three crashes in a row. This is ridiculous. So, it's extremely buggy. So, would I, see, would I recommend to use this on a daily basis? The answer is no. The reason being, it all depends on your needs. If you want to just use it as browsing and email and word processing with, my, with the help of Microsoft Word, go for it. It actually even works with YouTube. YouTube work, works well, and I never noticed a crash on it. So, there's some potential right there. However, if you plan on using it for games, well, you might want to forget about it. You know, I mean, I don't have my phone, but just stick to your Android phones. But I do believe this operating system has a lot of potential. Who knows, maybe with a more modern machine it works better. Maybe it's less buggy on a more modern machine as well. Who knows, it really depends. Probably it's my hardware that actually does a few things, runs free games, but... Eh. And the TP USB wireless works wonders, which is awesome. That, that alone just... <gasps> but... Hmm. It's a good machine. It's a good operating system, but it needs some more. <laughs> Lots of it for especially old machines like this. <clears throat> so that's it for this special operating system that I'm not even sure that I can call Linux because it has a Linux kernel, but that's, that's it. But anyways, cool operating system. Let's see what's going to happen with it. it. has potential. So if you... So if you have any questions, comments, anything I've overlooked or not looked at, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And, of course, until next time, take care.